number one, as I mentioned previously, um, Sober October starts this month. So for all my Sober October soldiers out there, if you are embarking on this journey of um, restricting your alcohol usage to zero and your drugs to zero, and whatever vice that you do to zero, then I definitely commend you because usually October is a crazy month to do so. There's usually a lot of kind of birthday parties in your office. Well, it depends if you're in the office or if you're still at work or not, or if you're working from home. But usually I always find there's loads of weird social gatherings that happen around now. Loads of great parties are happening around now. Burkheim just opened bloody hell at the beginning of October. So it's usually a hard time to kind of decide to do a, this sort of thing. But I'm a big believer in general, again, because I live life on the, you know, on the edge, um, especially with my occupation outside of my nine to five where I DJ and stuff, you know, in, in kind of local bars and pubs, it does somehow it does have a tendency to sometimes push you into self-destructive behaviors and to stuff that you don't necessarily want to do on a weekly basis. So I've always found having the reset button or having like a bit of a pause where you don't do as much for a one period for a period of the year can sometimes snowball into you doing it more frequently. Now it doesn't always happen, but it can happen. So you just because you do so October, for instance, this is a good year to do it good and a bad year be good and a, yeah good and a bad year to do it because it's a bad year because everyone's been locked indoors so naturally people are going to go nuts this time around and you'd imagine with, with um, halloween coming up and new year's eve and all that stuff and christmas celebrations people might go a little bit too crazy now the other side of it could be because people have spent so much time indoors drinking and just getting fucked right remember the first few months of covid everyone's i don't know if you where you live but because you know i live in a block of flats um an apartment basically and every and every time i'd go to the bin to truck stuff away and shit there'd be skips full of flipping glass bottles you know i mean people were getting smashed now it was maybe it's because they were just feeling a little bit down or because they had the opportunity to day drink and stuff because you're at home and no one could see if you're drinking but there was a lot of alcohol consumption in those first few months of covid again maybe it's a coping mechanism but still that was very concerning and um i think maybe because of that people have maybe just worn themselves out because i said i mentioned on the podcast a few episodes ago that i've definitely seen a decrease in the amount of people outside um not obviously in places like shoreditch i went out for like a little staff drinks the other day and it was a bit of a mind trip to be in a place like shoreditch right because um nothing has basically changed it was raining i think it was midweek and people were still out in droves getting lunch i'm sorry getting dinner going to an, a, a maybe a cocktail bar after um you saw groups of boys outside of cash points at really inspicuous times of the night knowing you know there's probably no good decisions being made out of the back of doing a little cash point drop or a cash point withdrawal at like 1 a.m or whenever it was i got the train back home but generally the vibe there is completely different to the rest of london really for the most part where i've been out most people haven't been doing it haven't been going out and getting on it or whatever so maybe this is the best year as well because people are going to tire themselves out so you can get back on to kind of being living a somewhat sober life at least for the month of october um me personally challenge why again mostly just drugs and alcohol that's it for me um there might there might be some other things i might add on down the line like the exercise stuff which i've been fairly good at to be fair i've been going to gym at least three times a week running at least once so that's four times four days out of the week that i'm already doing something i might want to up that and make it just crazy where i'm just doing two two a days no two two a days for yeah two two a days for per week and then maybe other gym sessions in between i might do that sometimes later on and then i might kind of do the book thing again i was speaking to somebody the other day on instagram they were asking about how how i read so many books and stuff and i haven't really picked up a book in recent years i think no in recent months since january but before that i was reading at least you know maybe between four to five books per month that i was just getting through and you know remembering stuff and using the stuff and putting into action because that's the main thing as well when you're reading a lot of these novels and um you know reading these fiction non-fiction books some of the messaging and maybe some of the um, language used, the words used, insights, motifs, plots, ideas, themes. I really like to kind of incorporate it into my day to day and maybe use it as a way to kind of frame the way I think about things and use it as a kind of weird operating system that you can kind of apply other things to. It can be a little bit of a conversation killer when you go to a house party though. So, you know what I mean? Don't invite me around when I've just done my Amazon bookshop and run because I might start talking about some shit that no one wants to talk about at 2 a.m. I have the balls on cat and stuff, but we move, we move. But um, yeah, man, 
if you're gonna do Sober October and you're jumping involved, when I say yeah man, I always hear um Tim Dillon's voice when he does the impression of Joe Rogan. Yeah man. <laughs> so good like so I think impressions are like that, right? Either you do an impression really bang on where you actually sound like the person, like that guy that does the football impressions of all the football coaches and managers and whatnot, or you do them so badly that people recognise what you're trying to do because it sounds so terrible and so exaggerated, people just can't help but laughing. And I think that's what Tim Dillon's impression of Joe Rogan has done. So yeah, um, so October starts, of course. So if you are getting involved, smash the like button, um, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you are crossing off your list. We're not doing it Burt Kreischer style. We're not counting the old days that we did not drink. We, we're doing it properly. First to the 31st, no mucking around. So make sure you leave your comment down below. And if you cheat, just let it be known. Put your hands up and say so. But none of this like kind of, oh yeah, I did this, I did that. No, no, no. None of that for like Fugazi stuff. Either you do it properly or you don't. And if you don't, no problem. But at least you've got some days in. That's the most important thing about it, just to get some days in, especially if you can get like a full week. If you can do a Monday to Sunday, especially if you're struggling with that stuff and you're usually a person that comes back home and has to kind of give yourself a little um jd on the rocks or whatnot then you're definitely going to see the advantages of it i know when i did it when i've done it plenty of times before i've done it this i've done it october i've done it january like i said before no i've not said it before in here i don't think but when i was working for a previous company i went to uh, berlin fashion week during a time and you know i got invited to all the cool parties because i was there with somebody that was very well known i got taken to all the best places i got taken to some adidas party where kano was performing of all people in the middle of Berlin they were giving out free trainers and shit I was too late for that of course but there was a free bar like when I mean free bar I mean free bar like when, when they like there's no such thing as a because in the UK we tend to have those weird things where there's like a limit behind the bar so it's free up to a certain point then you have to pay and then you have the they whip out the flipping uh, POS machines but this one was just like free free and if I remember correctly there was um, cocktails at the bar all free with the exception of maybe two and then when you just turn around, if you're like, oh, I'm broke, I don't want to spend any money. If you just turn around, literally there was a wall to wall, like fridge. I don't know how they installed that shit in, but literally wall to wall um, fridge of like Heineken that you could just like basically open the fridge and just get whatever you wanted. And they kept replenishing the shit. Absolutely madness. So I was able to do that and be fine. I went to the Bergheim completely sober, which, you know, I don't advise people to do. Don't get me wrong, but I did it. Um, went to Cocktail de, Cocktail de Moor. They are more sorry, the very famous um queer um what you call it club night in Greece Mula that's not around anymore. Um I went to Club Division there like that. Like I've I've done the thing. I mean I've done the thing. So there's no real confusion in my head about, you know, whether or not I can enjoy myself in those scenarios without having a drink or anything else. But in general, I think I spoke to about somebody else before. It is probably more favorable if you're going to go out to those kind of events to be somewhat intoxicated or under the influence. It just isn't as fun usually, I find. Of course, it can be if you go into it. Like when I went to Fabric that time to see Jeff Mills and to see that image and like, what's it called? Wigs, right? Yeah, that was sick, right? And I went in there mostly because it was a, um, what you call it? I got brought in, right? Someone put me in the guest list. So I was super grateful to go. And I also wanted to see a show, right? I didn't go in the Pacific to go and get my head completely mashed off in it. I wanted to go and see a sick rave and I did. I left my house at 2 a.m., arrived there, skanked out, saw a guy nearly collapse and just went home in it, right? So all well and good. But I think if you go out with this whole intention of trying to get like, you know, jiggy with it, maybe you might suffer in that regard. So maybe it might be beneficial just to kind of you know put that side to the, the put that thing to to one side just for the period of october october and obviously pick it up later on i don't know maybe maybe that's you maybe that's not you do as you please um but yeah let me know if you're getting involved in it of course there's charities involved in it too um there's Millen trust that are doing so october mainly for booze feel amazing and support people living cancer so obviously you can do that kind of thing but again mine's less of a charity thing and more so just of a personal kind of self inventory and just reset button just to make sure that i'm kind of you know keeping myself in somewhat um good nick right because if you're enforcing yourself to go in sober october once per year and you're doing the dry january kind of thing that everyone usually does because i feel guilty about how much they ate and drank during the christmas holidays then it's pretty decent in terms of making sure you're reducing your dependency and stuff and making sure you have some sort of balance now it would help if as a culture britain and just in general parts of europe had a better relationship not possibly let's say england let's not say europe europe is better we just you know we just have such a terrible relationship when it comes to alcohol and drugs and stuff we just don't have any and i can speak from personal experience we don't really have any what's that word called 
um, we don't have a kind of we don't have a self-regulatory system. We don't can't really like we don't have to measure ourselves to balance it. We don't really have a good balance thing. That's the issue. Um, maybe it's societal as well because, like I said, when I when I'm into other countries in Europe, because places are open later, there isn't really a need to go and go so hard. Whereas here, think about a small town in the UK, right? Most pubs close nine, ten, maybe earlier. Most nightclubs, quote unquote, when I went to what was it, Hastings, right? That's like a smallish kind of town. I think the club that I went to that was open the latest, I'm gonna say, was open until two or four a.m. And then the pubs were basically doing last orders just before eleven. So what people would do. So imagine if you're out already having dinner, you'd go to those pubs to have some grub get some alcohol down you because it's obviously cheaper in there and then go to a nightclub after because you know it's going to be more expensive or a strip club whatever you're going to go to and then of course you get chucked out there by 2 3 a.m but you're still steaming you still need to let off so quote unquote some steam right like it, it just doesn't kind of correspond for a good productive night out it's just going to lead to destructive behavior um personally or to other people so that might be part of the reason or just generally temperament wise we just you know it just is what it is it's just what we do here we get black out and then we just keep it moving until life hits us in the face and tells us not to do it again or we just kind of you know ignore the problem and hope it goes away you know who knows but yeah so october 2021 it's gonna be an interesting one again like i said but let's see what we do with that one